Hi, I'm Ali Patterson. On this episode of FinTech Finance, we're looking at how banks can truly understand who their customers are. For this, we speak with Martin Atkinson from Metro Bank to look at what they're doing to really understand their consumers' behaviour. We also head out to Madrid to speak with BBVA around the way that they're using data and analysing that information to understand who their customers are. We also catch up with the team at Glassbox to look at the role that technology plays in understanding your consumers. So I went to go and speak with BBVA to hear about how they analyse their data. Any company, any big company has worked, has worked uh, with segments uh, until now because that was the easy way to manage you know, different types of uh, customers. Now that we have more uh, technical capabilities and more data, we can go to segments of one, but what, what I like more is to attributes. So instead of going to segments and to say that I have eight segments, segments that are based on how they consume financial products, I can uh, look for attributes that have a purpose uh, that can be used maybe only once. So if, for instance, if we, we want to launch, I don't know, a credit card with uh, something relating to, uh, I don't know, online uh, travel shopping, hmm, I can try to find attributes related to that uh, in my customer's data and use that only for that pro uh, product. I don't need to have a complete segment and then adapt the product to that, that segment. So it's going to attributes instead of having several segments, having thousands of attributes that I can use uh, depending on what is my purpose. And this is something that can be uh, derived from the transactional data. Quite More nice. related to lifestyle uh, and not that much related to how, what products you have, for instance. Yeah, we're, we're doing several things. First of all, is trying to merge all the data sources that we have uh, within the bank that are very uh, dispersed, uh, internal and, and externally, because when you start uh, doing uh, online marketing, for instance, you have some of your data in an external uh, media uh, uh, agency or whatever. So we're trying to bring everything together so we have a single view of the customer. That is for customer understanding and this attributes uh, generation. And then we are trying to create services to uh, personalize the uh, finance services uh, to people. For instance, we are working on, on trying to predict what is going to happen in one single account one month uh, before it happens. So we can give advice to that uh, specific customer, only to him, uh, regarding how he's doing this month and the following one. Okay? And th that, that uh, advice is specifically uh, tailored uh, for him. That is one example. I wanted to understand from Glassbox just how quickly they were able to search specific interactions. It's very important, uh, both in real time and also after many years, you want to uh, uh, be able to search for a very specific interaction. So we enable uh, our customers to search uh, based on anything that happened within the uh, interactions. It's a free text-based search and you can search on anything, any uh, error message that uh, was within the interaction, anything that the customer typed, anything that the customer checked, any disclaimer, uh, uh, words within the disclaimer, you can search for anything. I wanted to speak with Gonzalo Rodriguez, also from BBVA, to understand a little bit more about how they use the information they gather. I mean, we don't use the mobile channels in any different way that we use any other channels. No, We, we basically know how many times the customer interacts with the mobile. This is something different from, from the website or the brand. So we know that our mobile channel, mobile customers use mobile in a much frequent way. Uh, so for instance, a, a pure digital customer interacts like more than 30 times per month with us. No? So this is the type of information that we use. But in general, we don't have a very different information on the, on the mobile rather than the website or, or branch. No? So, so banks today are quite siloed. They build out of many, many acquisitions that they did over the years. Uh, I believe that the digital allows them to uh, build a layer on top of those silos organizations with a good uh, seamless experience that they can provide and we enable them to provide over digital channel. They can uh, actually break those uh, silos within the organization. I also went to see Martin Atkinson from Metro Bank to find out what their approach to KYC is. So what we do is we do a standardized set of checks to make sure that we've got the right data. So we do our electronic ID and verification. We make sure that we do all the, set, the, the sanctions checks to make sure that we're not onboarding anyone that's either politically exposed or have got sanctions or and work with terrorists. 
And from a business perspective, we make sure that we've got the full richness of history upon the legal entities, the business, and people that work there, in order that we can be really confident that when we onboard our customers, that we're onboarding them in the right way, with a great experience, but also making sure that we discharge our accountability to the regulators. And as part of that process, I think we're relatively unique in that you can actually leave that process with a working debit card or working credit card, either whether you're a business customer or a retail customer. At the moment, on average, it takes around about 15 to 20 minutes to actually onboard a retail customer. And as part of that, not only do you get a fully functioning account, you get an instant issued debit or credit card. We register for your internet banking. And actually, we also register for mobile banking. And we actually have people leaving our, our stores, going straight across the road to Sainsbury's and actually buying something because they don't believe that their card's going to work so quickly because it's such a, a market-leading proposition. And from a business perspective, it takes a little bit longer, as you'd understand, because there's that, um, the greater richness of data that we need to capture. But at the moment, that takes a couple of hours. And I think if we look across the industry, the ability for a small business, a small trading entity to come in and get a fully functioning account within two hours and to be able to actually walk in without having to book an appointment, I think is a fantastic proposition and a real commitment to our customers. I wanted to find out a bit more about the different ways that BBVA gathers information. I especially wanted to know how they use the mobile phone to understand their customers. I mean, we don't use the mobile channels in any different way that we use any other channels. No? We, we basically know how many times the customer interacts with the mobile. This is something different from, from the website or the brand. So we know mobile customers use mobile in a much frequent way. Uh, so for instance, a, a pure digital customer interacts like more than 30 times per month with us. No? So this is the type of information that we use. But in general, we don't have uh, very different information on the, on the mobile rather than the website or, or branch. No? So we record uh, everything that the customer uh, is doing, any gesture, any information that the customer types, uh, uh, anything, any error that the customer sees. We record uh, everything. Uh, we store it in a, a very effective way with a very low uh, hardwood, hardware uh, footprint. Uh, and we allow uh, the firms to really uh, understand the experience from the customer uh, uh, perspective. We can record any device, uh, it could be online session, it could be a mobile app, uh, it could be on any device. We keep the, uh, uh, also the, the uh, information about the device, uh, the operating system that the customer w uh, was using, uh, the resolution, everything, so we can very accurately replay the session later on. So, so uh, our customers are using it for uh, uh, different use cases. Important one is the behavioral analytics, the uh, ability to understand not only what customers did over the uh, web or the mobile, but also why. Uh, again, if they were uh, abandoning at a certain point uh, or dropping uh, from the session, why they dropped. If they cho chose a certain service or certain product, why they chose it. Uh, this, the sec second use case is the support. We enable uh, the agents at the uh, um, contact center that supports customers that were struggling over the uh, web or mobile app uh, to complete uh, 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 the session successfully. We actually uh, uh, record what we call the digital truth. So really what happened to you while you were uh, uh, browsing? Let's uh, take an example. You can almost signed today a uh, life insurance over, uh, uh, over uh, an online or a digital channel. Uh, we are making sure that the uh, uh, firm holds the digital truth, so later on, if you have a question, if there is a dispute, someone can look at the digital session and see what really happened, uh, what disclaimers you could see, uh, uh, what uh, a checkbox you checked, etc., etc. Yeah, so we allow our uh, customers to mask any information that, that they are not allowed uh, to save or they don't want people within the organization uh, to see or view. We enable a sophisticated uh, masking uh, um, uh, capability so certain people within the organiza organization can see uh, uh, data that they can view while others cannot see that, that, that same data. So at the end of the day, I think it's a matter of what is the experience that you get. And that experience has, has to be personalized. And it's, it's impossible to personalize an experience if you are not uh, trying to understand what is happening to you, not only in the financial world, but also in your life. So this is what we are trying to check uh, in the data that we are using. 
I also spoke with Glassbox about how they're using data they have on their customers, both for security and compliance standpoint, but also how to use that to enhance the customer experience. So everything, uh, you know, the information that we capture belongs to the uh, firms themselves. It sits within the uh, uh, firm's uh, premises. It's important that uh, the uh, firms will use it smartly. Uh, so if someone is using an information about me and I feel that he's trying to sell me th something, that, that could be uh, uh, disturbing. While if I'm struggling to uh, 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 get a service and I'm calling uh, support and then the agent knows exactly what I was uh, um, experiencing and can help me uh, at the same time, that's something that I would appreciate as a customer. So, so it's important to say that we help our customers, the uh, financial uh, uh, firms, uh, uh, to use uh, uh, the information based on all uh, the uh, uh, privacy rules. Uh, we can mask any data that they uh, are not supposed to keep, like credit card information, etc. And we allow only the right people to look at the right data. That's a really good question. Um, what we found is that we've now got an analytics tool that is integrated into our digital state that starts to provide the management information and insight as to understand which bits work really well for our customers and which bits we think might be quite jarring. Uh, and we complement that with customer experience conversations and customer experience panels. And what that allows us to do is to have within uh, my digital team a set of people that obsess about the features that our customers want. So what we now have is what we call a backlog. This is a set of features that our customers want. And the really great thing is that the new mobile app is going to be delivered on a digital banking platform that affords real flexibility and real agility. So where we'd like to get to is that we're going to be in a position where we'll be doing constant delivery updates and delivering new great features for our customers on a two-week, four-weekly cycle. What we'd like to do is compare ourselves to the retailers. You know, you look at Amazon, they make a thousand changes a minute reportedly into their production estate. We're not going to be doing that, but we're really keen that we keep a constant rhythm and deliver some new features to continue to amaze, uh, surprise and delight our customers. On the next episode of Fintech Finance, we continue to explore the customer experience and customer needs. For this, we head up to go and see with MBNA to talk a little bit around what they're doing in consumer behaviour. We also speak with Posado around how to use artificial intelligence to predict. And we catch up with Barnaby Davis from Nationwide. <laughs>